Who I am, what I do, where I'm from. All right. <laughs> My name is Luke Parmeter. I am a videographer slash video editor slash video producer, and I live in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. And yeah, I basically tell stories through video for brands and businesses and uh, all kinds of different people. Uh, the last few years have been really exciting, taking on bigger and bigger projects and, and working with clients of, of all kinds. And um, you know, I, I went freelance basically three, three and a half years ago. Since then, it's just been fun to work in a variety of different fields and um, applying what I've learned growing up, you know, in the motocross world and taking that kind of excitement to, you know, construction and farming and um, trucking and, I mean, all these different businesses and stuff and, and still doing, like, the motocross stuff. Um, it's been fun and, like, I really enjoy um, the challenge of taking on new projects and, and just working with clients and, and telling their story. So yeah, there's definitely mostly good days, some bad days, but at the end of the day, like I'm doing what I love and, uh, you know, it's, it's just something I, I really enjoy doing. Taking it back now a little bit. Um, do you remember the first time like you picked up a camera and recorded your first video? Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, uh, like in middle school, we had a, just a, I don't know, an old Sony camera and me and my friends would film us skateboarding and just doing pranks and stunts. And, uh, it was fun, like, I didn't know it at the time, but it was like, you know, I really enjoyed what I was, you know, making videos and, and doing all these things. And once I figured out how to get that footage basically onto a computer, then it was like, okay, this is really fun now. Um, so that's when the, the editing really kicked in and um, didn't really take it too seriously at the time. Like, I think I was just so busy with like high school sports and stuff. And then, um, you know, once I got a little older and went to college, uh, I found out about you know, this multimedia program and from there I just kind of ran with it. So yeah, it's kind of been a fun journey from just picking up that old Sony camera to, you know, now we're shooting on drones and, you know, red cinema cameras. So it's definitely pretty cool. Yeah. So when I used to race dirt bikes, I'd bring my video camera to the races. And when I wasn't actually racing, I'd go out and film and I'd upload the videos to my website I built and, and little by little those videos started getting shared and just more and more popular. And, you know, I think at a certain point I was like, you know, we could probably keep doing this even when I'm not racing, you know, I could go to other events and just go to motocrosses and go to freestyle shows and all these things. And uh, being in college, I was kind of limited on the, where I could go and stuff, but I just kind of made the most of it. and. I never thought 12 years later that I'd be doing TV shows for Fox and you know NBC and literally traveling across North America doing this. Um, it's pretty cool to kind of look back at where it all started, and uh, but that's that's what you got to do. You got to get a start somewhere, and um, it's just it's pretty cool. That's how it all worked out. It just seems almost impossible how somebody can go to making these little recap videos to like working for Fox. I mean, there's got to be <laughs> so many so many uh, steps in between there. I mean. Do you have like specific uh, specific moments that really s took you on to uh, you know bigger, better things, newer clients? I think it all just came down to like having a goal, and like my goal was always to to film at the highest level, and like just growing up and loving motocross and supercross, I always wanted to work with those athletes, so that vision was always a part of me. So just having that as like the goal was just the driving force to to kind of get to that point. And I think the other thing that really helped was just taking advantage of all these opportunities that were around me. Like when I was in college, there was an indoor motocross facility an hour away. And like living in Wisconsin, that's unheard of. So I would go there two or three times a week and just film as much as I could. And you know, after a while that place just looked the same. So I was always trying to be creative when I was there. And I met a lot of good industry people and just kind of grew my connections there and really took advantage of that. And, and that was like with any kind of event or anything, maybe not even at the sandbox, but um, any event I go to, I would just try to make the most of it. So I think just being ready for those opportunities. And then I think the harder you work, the more lucky you get. And I think just those three things just really, 
just really kind of put me on a good path towards um, towards where I am today. I kind of had a big break in 2011. Um, I got to do some filming for a company called Verb Moto at the uh, Millville uh, Spring Creek motocross race. And this was like with all the top guys in the sport, you know, Kevin Windham, Ryan Dungey, uh, Villapoto, Kennard, they're all there. And no matter what the circumstances of that weekend, because it stormed like crazy, it was super hot, I was gonna walk away with like the best video ever. And like I was gonna do whatever it took to do that. So I remember going there Friday night, it had just poured, like we had this epic sunset. So me and Andy Kawa, we got all this footage of, of like this fog and just this really cool looking track all by itself. Got up early the next day, did the same thing. And I was just determined to make the best video because I was like, I might not ever be able to film the pros again. So if I don't do a kick-ass job on this, this might be it. So we gotta go all in. And um, I happened to be at the right place at the right time. Um, Chad Reed like flew off this jump and went 30 feet in the air. I happened to be there, I captured it. And uh, that was kind of like, he was okay, luckily, but um, that was kind of like icing on the cake for that video, like just being able to capture that. And that's kind of where it all started, like the professional side, because the people at Supercross saw that video and then they called me like two weeks later. So seizing that opportunity was just, it was huge. And who knows what would have happened if I, you know, went half in, you know? Um, so I look back at that project and that's like, still to this day, I love watching that video. I think it holds up and uh, you know, that's just a, you gotta, you gotta take advantage of these moments. And, and that, was, that was a really defining moment for my career. Would you classify that as one of like the, the most like pivotal moments to get, get your foot in the door of professional racing? I think, I think Millville 2011 was the, probably the most pivotal moment of my career because it just set the tone for like the style of videos, the emotion, like the grittiness. And like to this day, I still, I want to capture that feeling that you get when you watch that video. And um, so yeah, looking back at that, it's like, okay, this, this was a huge moment and <laughs> I'm just glad it worked out. So after Millville 2011, uh, I got a call from Feld Motorsports like a week before the first ever Monster Energy Cup and uh, they wanted to maybe hire me to do arena cross at the time. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. But then I got the call like literally a few days before the Monster Cup. And they're like, can you come out to Vegas? Like we want you to do opening ceremonies for this, for this event. <laughs> and that was on like a Tuesday. And I remember calling my parents. I'm like, so I'm gonna go to Vegas tomorrow. And uh, they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I gotta go to the Monster Energy Cup. They're like, they didn't even know, haven't heard of it yet because it was new and like, um, so yeah, next day I fly out and I'm just thrown into the Supercross world and from there it just, yeah, lived that life for, for a few years. But yeah, just going, going to the Monster Energy Cup, that was the, the big moment after, after Millville. Out of all your years so far of uh, being a professional filmmaker, what do you think your most uh, memorable experience so I've definitely had some really fun years. I mean, honestly, this last year was probably one of the best ever, just working with all kinds of different clients. But going back a few years ago, 2016 is when uh, me and a handful of other um, filmmakers and, and content creators created Chasing the Dream. It was a behind the scenes documentary on, on the Supercross athletes and, and industry, basically. and. That was by far the most challenging, but the most rewarding project I've ever done. Um, taking on the editing of that show by myself, like just doing the raw editing, the sound, the color, like I didn't know what I was doing, you know, technically, but you just figure it out and you end up, you know, just making something awesome. And, you know, the risk, the, the bigger risks that you take the bigger the reward is. So I think that was a good example of just getting outside of my comfort zone and just saying yes. And maybe just, I don't know if it's just being like having the guts to do it or just being dumb enough to say yes and like do it by yourself. But like that was a pretty defining moment for my career too. And yeah, you know, you look back at what we, what we captured. I mean, there were some cool moments. Um, 
and it was it was fun man like that was uh probably one of the most satisfying projects i've ever done as you said being the sole editor on a huge project like that uh how how tough is that that pressure that all that weight on your shoulders knowing you know you're you're the top guy for making <laughs> this making this video yeah having that pressure of hey you have to deliver four one hour shows to fox um with some really tight deadlines it was it was daunting it was um there was just so many unknowns especially with that first episode but we had a good crew and like you know i just stuck to a really strict schedule and you know you just got to figure out how to how to be able to maintain these long hours day after day because like i would do long like almost all nighters in college all the time on these projects i was doing well you can sleep in you know for the most part in college but when you have a family at home uh that's not sustainable so that was pretty interesting just figuring out how to how to be able to be at your best and just put in these long hours but yeah we got the first episode done and from there it was uh it was kind of like okay we it sounded good it looked good i was so nervous when it first went on tv i was because i had to do like a surround sound mix and i i didn't know if it was going to work it passed all the quality control tests but my heart rate was like at like 140 like moments before it aired on tv because and we had like a party and i'm just like i can't do this like i don't want to watch it so it came on and it looked good it sounded good um it looked like it did on my computer um looked all the same it sounded the same so once that that first minute went by it was like okay like we we got this so the next three episodes although it was it was crazy deadlines and stuff like just knowing the technical side worked um you know we could enjoy it a little more do you have any uh any horror stories from uh your all your previous clients or companies <laughs> that you've had to work for who is the dolly part oh, i should grab that cup hold on So yeah, there's definitely been a few projects I've, I've been involved with that, you know, when you get finished with it, it's like never again. Um, one of them that we all kind of look back and kind of laugh at was, it was with Feld. Um, at the time, Arena Cross wanted to run a promo. Uh, somebody in-house compared the start in like a whole shot of an Arena Cross to a stampede of Buffalo, like the energy and stuff and the, the rumble and all that. So they came up with an idea to go to the Dixie Stampede in Branson, Missouri and film, because they have Buffalo in this show, film like Buffalo running towards the camera and then getting a guy on a dirt bike riding along with them at the same time. So I thought the idea was a little crazy, but I mean, I can appreciate, you know, out of the world ideas and stuff. So I had to go fly down to Missouri, do a location scout, fly back, get a plan, and then we sent a, me and a bunch of other crew down there. And uh, it was just like, it was so stressful because like, we're literally on the floor of this arena and there's buffalo running around. They're trying to like, t like direct them where to go, but they could just charge you at any time. And we made it through that, but it was just like, gosh, this is just so weird. Like, what am I doing here? And then on the flight home, I was on this tiny little plane and we flew through this thunderstorm and our plane literally got struck by lightning. And I thought like, I thought it was done, you know? Um, and from that point forward, I was just like, dude, it is, it's not worth doing projects that I'm not into. Like if I'm not passionate about it, I don't want to do them. So from that point forward, I just said to myself, I'm never doing projects that I'm not passionate about. And that's when I, pretty much decided to go freelance. And um, so anytime I take on a project, I don't do it unless I'm into it. And I, cause I'm gonna be spending so much time filming, editing, thinking about it. I wanna be into it. So that the Dixie, Dolly Parton's Dixie Stampede uh, definitely took the cake for most odd project ever. So uh, I did uh, snag a boot cup here. So every once in a while I'll, you know, bust this out and remember that project, but. Yeah, Dick's, Dolly Parton's Dixie Stampede. <laughs> Gosh. I've heard a, a lot.
lot of uh, success stories where they're kind of at a certain point in their career or life, and they kind of look around, and they're like, holy crap, I mean, this is where I'm at today. Have you, do you think you've had that moment? You know, a lot of people come up to me, and they're like, man, you have, like, the dream job, and, like, it must be so much fun, and, I mean, I do, I, I'm living my dream, but don't take it for easy, because the stakes are higher when you're at this level. And like, you gotta be on your game. And I think a lot of times in the moment, I'm not able to enjoy it because it's like, you don't have time to. Like, you're so worried about getting the shot and making sure your audio is right, making sure your lighting is right. As I get a little older, I think I'm able to appreciate it more in the moment. But, you know, sometimes looking back, it's, it's like, you know, it's pretty cool, especially, you know, the whirlwind of, of Supercross and stuff like, you literally just go on tour basically and it happens so quick and you know sometimes you just don't even realize like oh my gosh I literally just took a helicopter over New York City and got six shots of the skyline and it was just like those little things you know looking back now I was like I was so stressed because my gimbal wasn't working that day and like they were waiting on me and I was like <laughs> outside of the chopper and my battery wasn't working all this stuff but uh, looking back now, it's like, you know, those moments were, were pretty amazing. What makes your, like, your filmmaking and your unique style, like, so, like, I guess, like, wanted within, like, the commercial, the commercial film industry, Supercross, Motocross, like, what makes your, your style different? I think my style just connects with people, and that's always been the goal. I, I honestly think it may come from, like, you know, my, my then girlfriend at the time, she was not into dirt bikes. She never grew up with them. But I was always trying to show her my videos. And I was like, well, how can I get her to like these? So I'd always try to put things in the video that anybody could relate to. So that's why I'm, I think showing B-roll and just showing emotion and real life things that, and a lot of times it's not even about the dirt bike or the, you know, the construction project or the trucking or whatever else I'm filming. It's about the people behind it and just connecting on the human level. So that's something I've always tried to do is just establish that connection to people. So I think that's really the, the thing that I'm always trying to convey in the videos is just connect on the human level. You know, if you don't get goosebumps after watching the video, I don't think the video did its job. So that's, that's always my goal. When I went on my own in 2017, you know, those first few months I had some work, but it wasn't like consistent. So that was, you know, a tough pill to swallow, but I feel like little by little, those projects just kept rolling in and one project led to another and people kind of found out that I was available to hire because I was so locked up with Supercross for so long. But once word got out, um, things just kept rolling and, and now it's to the point where I've got to like turn down work because I'm so busy. So it's a good problem to have um, but yeah, you definitely just gotta, just gotta go all in, I think, and believe in yourself. Your first movie you produced, I think, uh, was Butter. Yeah. Moto flavored. Yeah. Uh, I, I recall it making its way on iTunes top charts, uh, for, for a little bit. I'm not sure how high it got, but, um, did you take us through that process of, you know, coming up with the idea of that movie and did you really have any idea that it was gonna, uh, do so well in the in the market as they did yeah so in 2012 and 2013 Derek Getter kind of hit me up about making a a movie with dirt bikes and four-wheelers and side-by-sides and at the time no one else was really doing that and he used to produce DVDs back in the 2000s so he kind of knew that whole process and this time we were gonna do DVDs and iTunes and Amazon so you know, like, again, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I'm, I'm down, let's, let's go for it. So, yeah, we just, we filmed all over the U.S. for like six months and just edited together a really badass video. And uh, I just think the whole, the, the marketing behind it and just the name Butter and everything about it was just kind of cool. And... Uh, it, yeah, it did really well on iTunes, it sold a lot of DVDs, and uh, I was pretty proud of that. And that was, you know, 
that was probably another pretty big moment for my career too, just being able to, you know, hand out a DVD, like, hey, I made this. Um, or like look up on my name on iTunes, I'm, you know, I'm in there. Um, it's definitely a cool moment. I, like, it's just, I, you know, sometimes I don't even believe like those things have happened, but yeah, you just, <laughs> you just say you're going to do it and you just figure out a way to get it done. And, um, yeah, I was pretty, pretty stoked on that one when it was finished. And hanging out with all of, like your basically childhood heroes of professional athletes, supercross, motocross riders, like Chad Reed, Ken Roxon and Travis Pastrana. Mm -hmm. Does it um, was it hard right away, kind of putting putting aside your inner inner fanboy and realizing <laughs> you know this is strictly work and to um, you know just not be nervous and you know treat them like a, a an average Joe. Yeah, the first time you work with some of these superstar athletes, like it's pretty nerve wracking. Um, I tried to just focus on like my job mostly and and just like all right, you know, I'm here just to get the video, like, you know, relax. But it's just funny, like, even now, if like, uh, you know, I'm with one of my close filmers and like Chad Reed's in the next room, I'm like, dude, it's Chad Reed. And like, we'll just joke around like that. Um, and yeah, it's just like, you know, at first it's hard to kind of connect with them. But once you kind of establish relationships and trust with them, working with those, those types of athletes it's it's a lot of fun and uh and even just learning when when to you know approach them for videos and stuff that you have to get done with them um you know at first they don't know who you are so breaking down those walls is, is pretty key so yeah once once you get those relationships built um it's pretty smooth sailing and um you know even just the you know working with their teams and their PR managers like you a lot of times you have to go through certain channels to get to that athlete so learning that whole process was pretty interesting and um, yeah just part of the job but there's definitely yeah I mean every time you you know you go to like Stewart's house or something and you first see him it's like oh my gosh like it's James Stewart so yeah it's it's pretty at the end of the day it's pretty awesome you don't have to name drop here or anything, but have you had uh, any encounters with, with an athlete that just wanted nothing to do with you and just didn't, you know, didn't give you the time of day, or have they all been pretty, pretty solid to you? So I would say 99.9% .9 of athlete encounters have been positive. I did have one at the Monster Energy Cup in 2013 with a certain rider. I won't mention his name. So we went through his team, we set it up, but nobody told him that we were going to film and this was like at the end of the night where he was probably ready to get home. And so I go up to him, I'm like, hey, we gotta go film this real quick. And he looks at me, he's like, what are you talking about? Like, I've been here all day, why didn't we do it earlier? And like, we had to do it at night for one, so that's why. Um, so he was all mad. So he's like yelling at me. And uh, the worst part is, is he was doing it in front of Chad Reed, <laughs> Ricky Carmichael, and I think Wyndham was there too. So I'm getting yelled at by a certain rider um, in front of my other idols in a way. And uh, I just had to be like, you know what, whatever. Like, yeah, you're right. We were here all day, but we have to do it now. And um, even after that, like, I, I was so mad. But when we got done, I was like, hey, man, I'm sorry about that. And he was like, ah, oh, it's fine. So, you know, just being like the bigger man and, uh, you know, even just putting yourself in his position, like he was probably was ready to get home and like, he didn't want to spend another five minutes filming, but nobody told him, even though we did our part. So as much as I wanted to yell at him back, I held back and, you know, I had to work with him another three or four years. So I'm glad, uh, glad that went well in the end. Who do you think your, uh, your closest moto bro is in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, oh, man, the I don't know. I don't really. I don't really have a moto bro like I guess proximity wise like Dungy's the closest and like I probably worked with him the most um, so and I always liked seeing him win just because you know the Minnesota Wisconsin connection so I'd say him if you had your dream company to work for right now and they give you a full contract and salary and everything what do you think it would be your top company top company to work for Luke Parmeter Productions <laughs> No, I don't know. I, I don't think I could work for anybody else. Um, 
I don't know, kind of been there, done that. And I don't know, I don't think there's anything else I would want to do other than work for my own clients really, you know? And you know, my whole thing is like, I don't want to chase anybody else's dream. And when you work for somebody, that's basically what you're doing. You know, you're working for somebody else. You're, you're, you're achieving their dreams. And, uh, I don't want that to sound arrogant, but like, I don't know. I, I'm, I like what I'm doing. So I'm just going to keep, keep doing my thing and, um, work with companies that want to make badass videos and connect with people and connect with their customers and build trust with their customers. And, um, I kind of like it that way. So Hill Climb World has got to know, will there be a comeback to LP, LP, 3P? If somebody provides me a bike, I'll do a, I'll do a one-off race. So someone just got to come forward and be like, all right, here's a 450. We can arrange that. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe I will. I, every, every time like Derek Hughes comes around my hometown race, I'm like, gosh, I should just go ride, even though I haven't been on a bike in like five years. But I could still, you know, get over the hill maybe. So I don't know. I'll put that out there. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're doing this interview in my office and uh, we finished off this garage basically. And um, just, I wanted it to be a creative environment. Like it's when you, as soon as you walk in the door, I just want to have like creative vibes um, flowing. So lighting was really important. And then just, just the feel of it, you know, just having like this rustic metal ceiling and the tongue and groove available at Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes. Um, yeah, just, I mean, then the things on the walls, like the jerseys, those are just for sound dampening. They serve no other purpose. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, they, uh, yeah, over the years I've acquired a, a few few jerseys and um, yeah, it's pretty cool to, to have those up in here and, you know, kind of look back at some of the, the memories with some of those riders and stuff. And obviously McGrath was my guy growing up. So that one is, is pretty, pretty awesome. And the Dungey one, I think that's, that's from his last race ever. Uh, it's like a set from that night. So that's a pretty, pretty special thing. And, um, the hill climb championships, obviously, you know, those are important. I think I beat, you know, Logan that day, maybe, uh, <laughs> and then the next year it didn't go so well. Um, but yeah, just, uh, yeah, just having a, an environment you want to be in is, was the, the goal with this, with this office. And, uh, you know, just having like a desk where, like a digital desk, computer, and then just having like a workbench where I can build cameras out and stuff. Um, so there's a lot of functionality behind it too and, and just being close to my vehicle so I can bring stuff in and out, no problem, and play music as loud as I want when I'm editing so I don't have to bother the kids and, and vice versa, they don't have to bother me. It's uh, it's been fun and um, yeah, really happy with how it turned out. And yeah, got to get the the vibes right in your in your creative zone for sure. You mentioned uh, Golden Eagle Log Homes. I yeah. saw that you did a video series for them, crafting your perfect uh, cabin or somewhere along the lines of that. Yeah, but you completely blew up their their YouTube channel. <laughs> That's got to be cool to see for a company. Yeah, yeah, the Golden Eagle YouTube account just just blown up in the last few years and. I'm part of that, but my cousin Zach is like, he's like Regis Philbin on camera. He's so smooth. Uh, so he's a big part of it too. Um, you know, my dad and uncles are, are involved with it as well. So, um, so they have a hundred and I think 40,000 subscribers now. And, uh, yeah, people love log home videos. So to help them grow their business, uh, has been really special too. And uh, maybe someday I'll build my own house and we'll do my own series for that. And uh, we can blow that up as well. So I think, uh, yeah, it's been fun to, to help, help the family business out um, as well. They're always asking me, you know, when I was with Supercross, like, do you have any free time? Can you help us out? Can you help us out with some videos? And I never had time, you know, but now that I'm freelance, uh, I'm really, you know, involved with that quite a bit. And uh, we're doing live streams now and just all these things that, you know, we should be doing. So it's fun to, to help them out and pretty cool to see their growth. Uh, where can, uh, where can everybody find you on uh, social media? Uh, so you can find me just 
Luke Parmeter on Instagram, uh, Luke Parmeter on YouTube. Uh, just look me up on Facebook. I've got a Luke Parmeter Productions Facebook page. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, I got to post more for sure. I, ch I should do a better job of that. But yeah, you can find me pretty much on, on those major platforms.